Well, yeah, this is new dealing with matrices. So let's try up here. Now, matrices are going to get set up as follows. The way you see the numbers is pretty much what you're going to get. So this is going to be 3. This is going to be negative 4. This is going to be 2. This is going to be negative 3. Matrices are always written with brackets like this. This is going to be x. This is going to be y. Negative 6, negative 5. Well, that's all it takes to set up, set them up. Okay. If I want to do this one here, it would simply get set up as 2, 1, 1, negative 1, Nope, 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 nope. Back up, back up, back up, back up. One of the big things that they have to be is if they are in, if you're dealing with x and y, x and y, it's got to be in order. <coughs> this one here is not in order. It's 2x minus y and then the z. Okay? It's got to be written out. So this would be 2x minus y plus z is equal to 0. The next one would be x. There is no y, so I would highly recommend putting in plus 0y. You should really have the placeholder in there. That way, when you're using the calculator to go and figure these things out, you've got exactly what you need. Plus z is equal to 1. Okay. Constants always have to go over here. So I've got x plus 2y, I have no z, so I put in plus 0z is equal to 8. Now when I go and set the matrix or matrices up with this, it'll be 2, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0. X, Y, Z is equal to 0, 1, 8. And that's set up. What? It's easy to work with, but it's just getting the setup, but you got to make sure that you have every single one of the coefficients there. Otherwise, you're going to end up having a problem with it. Okay? Make sure that everything lines up, and you have to make sure that you've got zeros in there. Okay? So now, that was just simply writing them out. Okay. So we can go backwards from that. I'm not too worried about that. Now, here is where things kind of get a little strange. Okay. What we want to do here is perform row operations. Interchange any two rows, replace by non-zeros, Replace the row by the sum that now it's, eh. I don't always like playing with this like this, okay? So, they want us to apply the row operation to this, okay? Pay attention to what it's looking like here. I really don't want to go around this right now because you don't really use the row operations very often, okay? So, but what we do is we use matrices to solve, okay? So, what we're going to do here is I'm going to solve this one right here, okay? Now, generally what we do, create the matrix, step one. Everything is in order. We got blanks where they need to be. So this is going to be 2, <coughs> 1, 3, 2, 1, 
4, 0, 1, negative 1. X, Y, Z. Six, one, three. Now, 13. Now, technically what we should be doing now is we should be finding the inverse of this matrix. The inverse of this matrix is using the other stuff that we have there, using the, the row operations, and it's just terrible. So, calculator time. And I realize you guys don't have them today, so you'll have to call the one up on the graphing calculator that you got on your computer but, or in your Chromebook. But here we go. You'll notice that there is a nice little button on here that says matrix. Right below the math key, right above the X to the negative 1. So if we hit second, x to the 1, we end up in the matrix system. Okay. What we want to do is just like we do when we have stat. We plug a bunch of stuff in, and we go. So I need to edit. We're going to call this matrix A. Enter. Okay. It's going to ask you for what is the row by columns. Well, if I look at this, this is a 3 by 3. So I'm going to put in 3, enter, 3, enter. And now I just fill in the numbers. So we end up with 2, arrow over, oh, enter, 2, enter, 0, enter, brings it down to 1, enter, 1, enter, 1, enter. 3, enter, 4, enter, and negative 1, enter. Okay. So we've got this one done. Now what I want to do is I want to go back, just hit second, quit, go back to stat. No, not stat, sorry. Second, matrix. We need another matrix. So now our matrix is in there. We want to edit, but now we're going to edit matrix B. <coughs> Okay, so create that matrix, you press enter. This matrix is columns by rows. This is a one by three. Okay, whoops, wrong way. Rows by columns, I mix that up. Okay, well the nice thing is the graphing calculator puts it, does this look like what we need? No, so we just back up. That's got to go to one. That's got to go to three, so it's a three by one. Okay. So boom, boom. Put the numbers in. So we got six. Enter one. Enter thirteen. I said thirteen. Enter. Okay. I've got them in there. Second, quit. Now. If we go back to this thing, they want you to you do all these wonderful row operations and get all of this stuff down, and it would set it up so that you have the augmented matrix. This is what I loved about doing this when I was in college. All of this stuff, and you end up with an answer. Okay. Now, the thing is here, with the calculator, the calculator can do it all for us. Okay. So if I remember correctly, and it's been a while since I've played around with this, what I end up having to do is multi you'd multiply both sides by the reciprocal, just like you would do when you're solving things in a regular algebra. So call up the matrix. I want two. Take the 3 by 3. I want to inverse it. I want to multiply it by, and I got to go back to the matrix again, and I want to multiply it by matrix B. Now, the thing is, when you're multiplying matrices together, 
you have to make sure that the rows and columns match up. I realize that this just looks ugly, but when you're doing the order, if I wanted to multiply this together and I want to know what the order is, 3 by 3 and a 3 by 1, these two here have to match. If they don't match, it's not going to work. I cannot do B times A because that's 1 and 3. Those two numbers don't match. It only matches in B. <coughs> okay. So by going and using matrices and actually using the row echelon method that they've got makes life a little bit easier than trying to do the other stuff. But be honest, calculator is the way to go. So, when you have to deal with matrices for solving it, that's what I would do. Use the graphing calculator to go through and do it. Otherwise, I would simply use the other methods that we've got. So let's try this one once, see what happens. <clears throat> okay. This is an in, supposedly an inconsistent system, meaning that there's not going to be a solution there to it. So let's give this a whirl. So all my x's are lined up, my y's are lined up, my z's lined up, my constants are lined up. So my matrix, 1, 2, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 1. Negative 1, 2. That's the coefficient matrix. X, Y, Z variable matrix is equal to the answer matrix, which is going to be 6, 3, and 0. Okay. So, go back to the calculator. Now, the nice thing is, you can just, all you got to do is just punch it in and edit. So, we go over, we're going to edit A. We're just going to change the numbers. All of these things stay the same. So this is going to be 1 enter, 1 enter, 1 enter, 2 enter, negative 1 enter, negative 1 enter, 1, 2, 2. Okay. This is one of you hit second, go back into the matrix mode again. You don't have to hit second quit. That was the old calculator. Sorry. We're going to go and edit. We go down to B. We're going to edit that one. That's okay. That's okay. So we got six. This is supposed to be three. This is supposed to be zero. Okay. So I got six, three, and zero, right? Now, what this actually looks like if I write it out. So I've got matrix A multiplied by matrix A inverse. Come on. Now, what happens if you take <coughs> a number and multiply it by its inverse? What does it go to? What's it go to? Pick any number you want. Multiply it by its inverse. Or reciprocal. It goes to 1. So what happens here is this goes to 1, which is basically the identity matrix. So that means that when I'm multiplying it here, and I've got x, y, and z, I'm taking this, multiplying it by its reciprocal, and just like we do when we're solving algebraic equations, when you multiply by the reciprocal, it goes to 1, leaves you with your variables over here. So now we've got the matrix over here for B, and what you do to one side, you must do to the other side, correct? And when I do that, then I end up with the values for X, Y, and Z. This is what's actually happening here. So, go to second. We go to matrix, we take A, yep, clear, ah, that's why I got to go second quit, sorry, yep, so it still is that way, so I got to take A, inverse it, multiply it 
grab the matrix again, go to B, enter. Okay, so that means I screwed up when I hit clear, clear, clear. Matrix, edit, because I put that, that's what I thought. No, that's right. What did I do with second quit? I hit something wrong. That's right. So why did it give me an error? Second matrix A inverse multiplied by second matrix B Oh yeah, that's right, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. So, no inverse matrix exists. I should have just read the instructions. So if you get this up here that says no inverse matrix exists, you can't go through and do this. Okay? So you put no solution. So if you get that, you've got all the numbers typed in correctly, no inverse matrix exists. No solution. Okay? That's the way that goes. It always helps if I pay attention to the instructions. Okay? So when you want to solve with matrices, that's what I would do. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, okay. last thing I want to talk about here is dealing with this idea of determinants. Now a determinant is basically going to tell us if we can actually have an inverse matrix. So make sure that you've got this written down so that you know how to go and take the determinant. Okay. Now, of course, since we got the calculator, can we do the calculator and do determinants with it? Yes. So second quit, get out of this. I'm going to go down the matrix. Clear that one out. Whoops, second matrix go there. Edit. And the thing is about this, the easy way of doing it, second plus seven one two. Just reset the darn thing and you got your matrices back again. So second matrix. I want to go to edit. And I'm going to create this matrix down here. I got two negative or three negative two, six, and one. So I want to create a two by two. So I plug it in. Three, negative two, six, one. Second quit. Second matrix. Go back into it. Now you notice that there's math here. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can do with it. And since we're talking about the determinants, I want to know what the determinant of this one is. So I would hit enter. I would go second matrix A. So what I want is the determinant of A. The determinant of the A is going to be 15. Basically, all it is is multiplying the diagonals and subtracting the two. But when we do an inverse matrix, the determinant, if the determinant is zero, there's no inverse matrix with it. Because when we do the inverses, we put it over zero. So, good old Kramer's rule. You'll hear it if you go into deeper mathematics. I just want you to be aware of this thing. Okay. So, evaluate three by three determinants. Ugly. Okay. But you can pop them in and come up with the 3 by 3 into the graphing calculator. I really want you to know how to use the graphing calculator with this stuff. Because this would actually take a boatload of time 
to go through and do. Okay? But if you can manipulate the calculator with it, that is generally what you end up doing with it. Okay? So that's all I'm going to say about this. I want you to be working on the problems, and so that way I can answer the questions on it. But this is mostly going to be on the calculator.